Okay, then let's get stuck into Darth Vader. This is our next optive expansion. Really nice looking bit of work here. Can't wait to get this guy on the table. Let's get it open. Let's get into it. Right, so first things first. I'm going to try to be quick about this. Instructions. Looking good. Lots of detail. Lots of kind of small parts. Well, not small parts, but lots of parts you'll be able to modify. Not modify. I'm saying the wrong words today. Lots of parts you'll be able to paint separately so you can get really into the detail here. And of course, any new rules included. So if you don't know what the rules are, what they do, it's all included there. Uh, standard stuff you got your ffg kind of pack of cardboard once again vader is an operative in case you didn't catch me saying that so this is not your commander vader a uh, host of command cards and upgrade cards we'll come into those in a little second but here is the main attraction this is darth vader operative look at that that is incredible i am so impressed with the modeling that ffg are doing I feel like a broken record player. I'm saying this so often now. Their latest range is since they've kind of moved on to doing the harder plastics. It's like they've upped the game and everything else. And we've got Vader here looking so kind of powerful and so dynamic in his movement. You really kind of feel it. Now, what I understand is this one's modelled from uh, a comic book. I think something to do with like fear and dead men where he crashes his escape pod on a planet and you'll see some of the cards they reference that directly but I think this is taken directly from them because his, his modelling and features are a little bit different and what I'm going to do I'm going to take an opportunity to show you my Vader just to kind of a look now I know he's dead shiny I tried to varnish him after I finished painting him it did not go well so I learned a lesson about not bothering to varnish and just to take the chips but round the mask this one is kind of lacking in features where this guy there's so there's so much micro features and i don't know if the camera's picking it up but round the mask there's so many small features it's like got it's like it's been chiseled from stone where this one it obviously looks like the smoother mask because you know it's true to the film so i'm not criticizing it but wow they've brought it in everything down from the ridges and the gloves the the lines and the kind of the breakdown in his suit the panels on his uh, on his kind of chest console it's just so impressive and it's so nice to look at. I'm really looking forward to painting this guy up. I mean, see if you, I hope you can appreciate that the way I can. But anyway, now we'll, now I've done Ogung Vader, <laughs> and I'll show you up his skirt just so you can see how uh, how how that kind of does billow. Uh, but now I've finished ogling him. Let's get into the cards. Right, let's have a look. So let's put Vader's out of the way. Okay, so starting with his card now this one is of course an optative so there is a massive drop in his points now one thing i want to point out to you is this is darth vader the emperor's apprentice uh, so i think you want to make should bear in mind that this is going to be a less powerful version of the darth vader that you see in the core box now don't let the words less powerful fool you this guy is going to wreck the place and it's going to be a lot of fun uh, we'll just go through these nice quick two force powers one training upgrade so slightly less than he had before uh He's got Deflect, he's got Immune Pierce, so once again, if he's in lightsaber battles, he should be fine. Now, he's got this great keyword, which is so thematic, because at, at this time, this is when like we are at the Revenge of the Sith stage. He's got Jedi Hunter. So when he's attacking a unit that has a Force Upgrade power, so Luke or Dooku or anyone uh, that has a Force Upgrade pa power, you aim Surge to crit. So he doesn't have any kind of upgrades there on Surges, but essentially at that moment, he will be able to turn his hits into crits, which is fantastic. Master of the Force 1, so he'll be able to turn one of his four spent Force cards. Uh, he will be able to refresh that without having to do a refresh in action. He's got Relentless, so just as a reminder, that's the one where you can uh, move and then do a free attack. So it's kind of like Charge, but essentially you could be doing an Impact. So in this case, when we come down to explore this, that would include that. And it's got this this keyword Spur that I've only seen once before. We saw it in the Jubax. So it's kind of odd to see it on Darth Vader because I'm struggling to imagine him wearing a great big spiky things on the back of his uh, back of his cowboy boots to spur himself along. But <laughs> for the sake of this, let's explain it. Whilst you're performing a move, you may gain one suppression token to increase your maximum speed by one. Now, I've heard mixed reviews of this, but he's got three suppression. Um, I'd be prepared to take that hit. I'd take a suppression token to get him up to speed two to get him right into combat. Absolutely, why not? Now, bear in mind, that's when you perform a move, so it's not like every time you do it. So if you want to do like a double move, you're going to take two suppression, which is still fine for Vader, but do be be mindful of that, because ultimately, he's not like the old Vader who had a nil tick for his suppression where he just couldn't be suppressed because he was fearless, essentially. This guy does have it. So there might be a time when you're kind of 
Vader is having to not retreat because that's not how the Dark Lord operates, but where he might be getting out of fire. So let's look at his weapons. Also, let's look at health first of all. So six health, three uh, three courage. So a lower uh, health and lower ability to kind of ta take some wounds by two, but uh, and without being fearless because he's got the the suppression value, it is going to kind of change things. But it might not be a bad thing because he will now at least get the benefits of cover, so we can enjoy that. Right then, I don't think I explained that very well, but hopefully that made sense. Right, so let's have a look at this. We've got Vader's lightsaber, which is 5 reds, th impact 3, pierce 3. A great, powerful, probably the best weapon in the game, frankly, Vader's lightsaber. I can't think of anything off the top of my head which does all that and ha rolls such hot dice. And then a range attack, which you never got before, which, was, which is force throw. Now this has got blast, so it ignores cover, which is always good when you're only rolling two attack dice. You know, he doesn't have any surges to help him out. But it's also got scatter. So just to help you out with scatter, if I do an attack on a, on a unit, I can cohere, except for the unit leader, I can cohere all the models around it. So essentially you've got the unit leader sitting behind a barricade, for example, and everyone else behind him. Well, when I scatter them, I'm going to bring them all forward of that barricade, except for the unit leader. So essentially, they're no longer in cover, so anyone else who's going to shoot at them is going to get the benefit of it. So it's actually quite a good tactical weapon. It's not something we've had before, but it's going to be really, really interesting and uh, should give us a lot of uh, a lot of fun putting into good use. Okay, nothing different on the back of there. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's scatter explain in a bit more detail if you didn't know what it did. And just some nice artwork. Right, let's stop messing around. Let's get into these cards. Right, so it's one pip. Vader's Might. Now, I cannot wait to use this in a battle. And check out the artwork. It's just so moody and nasty looking. Anyway, so issues Darth Vader only. Darth Vader gains as an action, choose uh, another non-heavy unit at range 1 and place that unit on the, battle, uh, on the battlefield within range 1 and the height of its current position. Then if it is an enemy unit, roll one white defence dice for each minion unit. That unit suffers one wound for each, uh, each hit shield or surge result on the defence dice. So essentially, as long as it's not a heavy unit, so this can be a Tauntaun, this can be a Durak, this can be most anything other than your tanks and your airspeed and your ATSTs and whatever the Federation and the clones are, are about to have. But you can pick that up and you can you can essentially um, you can place it anywhere within range one and height one. And not, not a movement one, not like a little kind of movement one, which you get with a force push, a range one. So that's like six inches across. So you can not only pick something up and just heft it out of cover, you can put it at height if you want to, if you want to make it very difficult for it to get down if it's on was on a key objective. And also it's going to suffer some degree of damage, albeit not a lot. But I think this one is about getting things out of the way. An excellent one. I can't wait to use it. Um... It's going to be a lot of fun to do, and it's going to wreck people's day when you do it against them. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, there we go. Fear and Dead Men. So this is what I was referencing before when I was making a load of nonsense talk about comic books, because I haven't read it, so I can't pretend I know what it is. But essentially, he crashes on a planet, and uh, I think the rebels try to try to apprehend him, and he says along the lines of, oh, I'm, all I'm surrounded by is fear and dead men. And then, as I understand it, proceeds to kill basically an entire rebel outpost. And this is the card which reflects that. Reflects that. So, issues Darth Vader only. So, while Darth Vader uses deflect, uh, the attacker suffers one wound for each blank instead of each surge result. So, essentially, that means that whilst you might not be able to surge, which is just as likely on um, on a red dice as you are to draw a blank. But still, it just kind of changed the way things are. But when an enemy unit is at range 1 to 2 and in line of sight to Darth Vader activates, uh, he gains one do dodge token. So essentially, you are going to have a ridiculous number of dodge tokens uh, and it changes the way he kind of deflects out. I don't think that makes any difference on the dice roll, but what you really want to know about is if you put him somewhere maybe a little bit adventurous and he's now outgunned, you can deploy this card and essentially give him a load of dodge tokens which is hopefully going to make him more viable and give him lots of access to that deflect keyword okay last one this is darkness descends again just darth vader i think this is taken from the star wars rebels cartoon when he kind of flies down on his uh on his tie fighter i'm presuming that's what this is from because i'm not <laughs> i don't think i've seen it before but anyway let's get into it so when Darth Vader is issued an order, he gains two surge tokens. So essentially, that's two abilities to turn a hit into a into a 
a, say, a surgeon to a hit or a surgeon to a defense, depending on the dice. Um, this card may be revealed. This is the interesting thing. This card may be revealed at the start of the deployment setup. If it is, it must be selected during round one. During Vader, uh, Darth Vader gains infiltrate and scout one. He must be, de be deployed at the start of the setup. So what that means, because it's a bit complicated, it's a lot very wordy. So you would basically, when you're setting up the table, when you've kind of picked your command cards and you're picked sides and you are basically ready to start putting units on the table, you kind of essentially reveal this card. So it's a bit of an odd mechanic, so don't forget to do it. So you, you reveal this card and essentially at that point, Darth Vader gains infiltrate. So when you come to place Darth Vader, now basically that's the last thing you will do. So he will then be the last unit to go down. So this can be a bit hit or miss, but essentially this will now become the command card you've got to play. But Vader's going to get infiltrate. Now, the, only, the rules are that you can't be within range three of another enemy. So that is quite a big distance. But essentially, you're going to be able to put Darth Vader potentially in the middle of the battlefield, out on the skirts of the battlefield, on top of an objective. And he's got Scout 1. So essentially, you can put him somewhere and then get him behind cover if that's what you want to do. But essentially, Darth Vader is going to land within your ranks and start wrecking stuff. And uh, I had this one used against me last night. Luckily, through deployments, I was able to nullify it. But instead of Darth Vader being on the other side of the board, he was in the middle of the board. And uh, I was suitably terrified. Really, really happy with this. And uh, I've only played against him. I've not played with him yet. But I can't wait to get him on the board. He looks fantastic. It's going to be a great laugh to play with him. Very nearly forgot. Let's just talk very quickly about the cards that come with it. So you may have seen some of these before. So we've got Force Guidance. So this is a Force Upgrade card, which exhausts at the end of the turn. Choose two friendly units at range one to two. Each one gets a Surge token. So that's a good way to give a bit more of a, a bit more endurance to them. Now, speaking of endurance, we've got this card, Endurance. So at the end of activation, you may remove one suppression token. If you're going to be spurring Vader across the battlefield, this might be very useful to have. Generally speaking, it's a good upgrade card because it's another guaranteed way to get rid of an additional suppression. So if you've been pinned down quite a bit or subject to a lot of attack, to leave a standard one, you'll be getting rid of two suppression tokens. Tenacity, this one is you added the red attack dice to your attack pool if you've suffered a wound. So during the melee, Vader's five dice now becomes six red dice, which is insane. And lastly, fear. This one is a great one. I had some great luck running with running it recently. And you gain demoralize one. It's only three points. So after your rally step, you may uh, an enemy unit at range one to two gains one suppression. It is only one unit. Please don't be mistaken like I was for about five minutes last night when I thought I had managed to suppress most of an army. But it only applies to one enemy unit uh, at a time after your rally stage. But still, great art, great card. Well priced at three points. So I think this is going to get a lot of use. Stay with him. And I think you combining this Darth Vader with the all six of the Darth Vader command cards is going to be incredibly fun. And I cannot wait to do it. Hey guys, thanks very much for watching. Please go and check out the guys at Blame the Dice Wargaming War and subscribe to their channel. Thank you very much. Goodbye.